Okay, I'm going to call the uh, town recording in progress. I'm going to call the town of Barnesville, Barnesville Historical Commission to order on Tuesday, May 16th, 2023, 3 p.m. for the, the agenda. Um, roll call. Nancy Shoemaker? Here. Marilyn Fifield? Here. George Jessup? Here. Cheryl Powell? Here. Nancy Clark? Jack Kay? And Barbara's not here, she's in Italy. Italy? Lucky lady. Uh -huh. Please Sounds note good. that the meeting is recorded and broadcast on Channel 18 in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. I must inquire whether anyone is taping this meeting and to please make their presence known. No one's seen. Acting under the provisions of the codes of the town of Barnstable, subsection 112.1 through 112.7, the Historical Commission will hold a public hearing on the following applications. The following applications have been determined significant and referred to a public hearing. And Jack Kay has joined us. Can Unmute. <clears throat> First application is um, Jeffrey and Lisa Edelston, 523 Main Street, Katuit, MEP 021, parcel 095, built in 1890. Partial demolition, remove family room addition, rear deck on east side of house, kitchen gable, and partially remove west facing roof, remove house brick and block foundation, and demo existing detached garage, built 1992. Construct new family room to the east and extend kitchen and bedroom above this to the south. Construct new second floor dormer to the west, new foundation, and a new garage with loft. And who's here for the Edelstons? Uh, I'm Garrett Frost. I'm an architect. Great. Thank you. We're all ready for you. I uh, do. I do. I present the uh, the PDF or yes, you... please. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I can screen share for you, sir, if you want to yeah. tell me what um, pages you would like displayed to the commission. Uh, starting with page three. You should be able to see page three. Does everybody see it? Yes. It's the photograph of the two car garage behind. Yes. Okay, so that's the existing condition photograph taken from the um, north northeast um, page four. Page four is taken directly from the street due north. Page five. Page five is taken from the street uh, from the northwest. So there, on this side of the property, there is um, a, a thick piece of uh, a piece of undeveloped land that goes, um, I think, almost to the. Um, I think the next <coughs> next developed lot up the street is the uh, might be the, um, the the garage the the auto garage there. Anyway, as you can see, um, the west side of the building is very close to the property line. I am actually standing uh, not very uh, on the other side of the property line, um, away from the house, just to give you perspective. Uh, page page six. Page six is the site plan. Uh, 
I couldn't get it to rotate so that it was all in line, but whatever. Um, so this shows <clears throat> page four's photograph was shown from from right here. Page page five's photograph was shown directly on this way, and page six photograph was shown uh, at this corner right here, just to give you perspective. Mm -hmm. So the existing footprint of the dwelling is right here. There will be um, uh, the the rectangle to the uh, east is uh, the main portion of the family room addition. The middle portion um, between the main house and the and the proposed family room is going to be a, a rebuilt section, uh, a rebuilt existing section. Um, that's going to be a, essentially an entry in a mud room and a stair. Uh, to the south uh, is going to be the extension for uh, the the kitchen. And then uh, the bedroom on the second floor where it says existing dwelling up on the second floor, that's where the uh, proposed uh, second floor dormer addition is going to be. Then uh, at, at the rear of the property uh, is the existing garage, which we are uh, wanting to remove and replace with a new garage, roughly in the same location, no closer to the street. Um, and um, it has a slight change in footprint, putting a, a stairway to the outside, um, but still within all of the uh, property setbacks. Um, next, next page. So this is um, the existing floor plan showing the area, uh, the existing uh, room to be removed, uh, as well as the uh, south gable end wall, um, where it says kitchen gable end wall. Uh, those, these gable end walls will be uh, removed so that an, an extension can be, an addition can be, uh, be made. And next page. This is a footprint of the garage showing that that, that will be removed. Next page. <laughs> this is, uh, this is the existing condition elevations. Um, so the uh, north elevation, as you can see to the, uh, to the left side, the existing addition, it's the existing old addition. I, I don't know when that addition is, was built. It's not constructed the same way as the existing house to remain is constructed. So it's gotta be an addition at some point in time, though it's not recorded anywhere. That's going to be taken down and uh, a new structure, slightly, slightly bigger, um, took back in its place. Um, but the other three elevations essentially are showing the same, the different views of the existing house. Next, next drawing. This is existing elevations of the existing garage. It was um, it was built, um, I think, as a contractor garage, um, and um, it's got a uh, a low ceiling on the second floor, um, a stairway that cuts right through the middle of it. While it's all painted up and nice looking on the front side, the um, the other three sides are in just okay shape. Uh, there's cracks in the foundation and things like that. Um, that and the client is wanting uh, a nicer a nicer structure built. Next one, um, next drawing, please. So this is the proposed. Um, additions um, from the north side street facing. 
we have this is as you can see from the uh the mark uh the the writing existing house renovated versus uh rebuilt family room addition um there'll be the client would um after speaking with uh architect and contractor uh, is now definitely interested in uh, putting in a new foundation underneath the entire house um, both the existing house and the addition that would have a basement um, what we are hoping to do is um, put a uh, the the foundation of the entire structure now to be a either brick faced foundation or a uh, that would be on the existing uh, on the new concrete foundation or possibly even um a um a brick shelf uh, a foundation with a brick shelf and having full uh unit masonry we got to investigate the pricing on that um this is the north face this is the stairway area right here uh I'm sorry, you, I don't control the pointer. I'm, I apologize. Um, and um, then uh, all of the uh, trim that we see on this north side, I'm basically taking the roof pitches and the trim details of the existing house and bringing them over and using that as proportioning and uh, height guidelines for uh, the new structures. Um, this down below on the east side is the south elevation. Um, and it's pretty straightforward as as you can see all of the um, all of these um, new additions are equal to roughly equal to the same height as the existing building um, in the distance uh, on this east elevation you see um, the uh, kitchen uh, addition and a uh, second floor bedroom addition um, being um, shown there um, this is also uh, up in the top corner of the uh, north elevation on the right side. You can see the proposed dormer uh, for the second uh, second floor bedroom on the front side of the house. That's the only change to the existing historic structure that the client was requesting. Uh, next um, drawing, please. And this is the west elevation. Um, west elevation shows the proposed kitchen addition, um, as well as um, the uh, dormer on the uh, upper on the on the roof of the second floor of the existing house. The uh, the main house south elevation uh, shows the. To the right, the family room uh, facing out towards the backyard. Um, there'll be a main back entry. Um, up a set of steps, there'll be an on grade terrace as opposed to a big giant deck, which is currently there now. Um, the three windows across the back in the center is the uh, kitchen, kitchen counter with kitchen sink facing out to the backyard. Uh, the second floor is the uh, south facing window of the uh, primary bedroom. And then uh, there'll be a, a, a small side porch uh, coming off the side of the kitchen, which will um, go to a, some landscaping back here in the back corner of the house. And then uh, the right side structure which the gable, these gables, all three gables, gable ends that you see here are not in the same plane. Um, they're, they're in different, um, 
different planes. So that's why this uh, the 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 existing dormer that's proposed on the west side of the house looks kind of distant because it is further much further back. Um, is that my last drawing? I think it might be. Oh, no, this is the three, uh, the four elevations of the proposed uh, garage carriage house. So uh, we have the one one car uh, one car garage bay. There'll be a um, person entrance uh, from the parking court that uh, takes you back to the back portion of the uh, garage where there'll be a, 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 a larger room that's got um, uh, uh, recreational activities going there. Um, the west elevation shows an extended dormer which uh, houses the stair going up to the second floor and it has dormers each side of the second floor, um, allowing headroom for uh, proper second floor space upstairs. So that's um, that's my presentation. Um, again, uh, the clients are wanting to make a really nice high quality addition to the existing house, be good stewards uh, for the property and um, you know improve it for their family so that they can uh, use it this generation and hopefully the next. Thank, thank you. <clears throat> Is there any public comment? Seeing no public comment, I'll accept a motion to uh, close the, the uh, public hearing. I move that we close the uh, public comment from this project. I'll second that, Nancy Shoemaker. Okay. Um, so, um, Aye. roll call. Um, Nancy Shoemaker? Aye. Marilyn Fifield? Aye. George Jessup? Aye. Cheryl Powell? Aye. Nancy Clark? Jack Kay? Aye. Okay. All right. Any commission comments? Yes. yes. Question: uh, Garage Ridge is that higher or lower than the existing house? It is uh, higher than the existing house. The existing garage is, uh, I think, uh, slightly lower, and I think I've increased it by about. Um, uh, I want to say two feet. I don't have the number right off the top of my head, um, but. So it, it has not gone above the um, the uh, existing house significantly, I'll say. Um, well, because it's a different period, it's not uh, inappropriate to have it uh, taller than the front building. Right. Well, and I and I kind of need it just to get reasonable headroom. Yes. Floor. Um, you say that uh, staircase is in the middle of the front elevation the is that divided no, the, into two rooms on the second floor it's it the uh the existing staircase is in the middle of the garage dividing the second floor ah. so you can't use the your second floor for for much of anything i wouldn't be i wouldn't guess so certainly not uh, tennis or pool um Where did, did you say you had a uh, uh, staircase at the uh, north elevation of the main building? The windows that are offset yes. from the, yes. uh, yeah. They, they have add, they've added a second, a, a second stair to the, to the property because the existing stair, so the four windows in the middle of the north elevation <laughs> Yes, our our is our stairs, so that allows light to get down, um, get into that middle part of the house there, as well as down into the uh, basement area of the stairwell. U shaped uh, staircase. Yes, yes, yeah. and it's not going to be an enclosed stair, so that it can allow a light to pr 
penetrate okay. into the <laughs> middle of the building. The existing stair is um, tiny and it's through the years, it's kind of gotten through uh, not being to code and they're hoping to retire down to this property and want a better stair for getting up and down stairs. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you have that bay window in the new structure, right? Yep. That's yes, all. New, that's all new structure. Yes, sir. But you've maintained the ridge height. Yes, sir. With the existing structure. Yes, sir. And so, uh -huh. so that that bay windowed area is uh, a couple of steps down, which allows this the slightly bigger volume to be um, the same ridge height. Yeah, I notice the plate height is lower. Yep. So you've got a, you've got a wider structure maintaining yep. the same roof pitch. Yep. Um, I can see if one problem that I would have with the, the dormer on the second floor of the existing structure, <laughs> and that's where you might have a snow build up in the in the valley to the right of it, looking at it. Um, There's, there's carpentry tricks you can use to avoid that, but I like the look of it, uh, especially since it's centered in the roof remaining. Okay, that's uh, everything that I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you, George. Anyone else have any questions, comments? Yeah, I do, Nancy Shoemaker. On the house, the uh, addition with the, the bay window that's to our left as we were looking at it, um, that, is how much is that recessed back from the front of the existing house? So um, the right side and the left side, is it recessed back? Yes. This. Oh, I see it is there. I'm this sorry. This is yeah. back. Yeah, I see it on the bottom. In the, in the east yeah. elevation, you can see yeah. the difference between the, the, the front elevation. Yeah, good. Okay. It's back, uh, I want to say, six feet or so. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone okay. else? Are there no fireplaces in this new structure? Uh, they are thinking about a, 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 a direct vent, a zero clearance fireplace in the family room. Haven't decided on exactly what yet. So, so, so we're not going to so have a mason. So, so the blank, the blank wall, the blank wall on the east elevation, the blank portion of the wall in the east elevation is roughly where we are thinking that a zero clearance fireplace is gonna go. With no masonry chimney, is that correct? No masonry chimney, no. Okay, thank you. Any other questions <clears throat> from the committee? No, I just had a question about the uh, the various types of a uh, foundation you were talking about. Sure. Um, so what are the two brick options? Options. Uh, so one option is building a, a a very thick foundation and putting a shelf, a brick shelf on the foundation so that you can put a standard three and a half inch thick brick there it's it's a an expensive option uh, the other option would be building a standard foundation that would have no brick shelf but applying a thin what they call thin brick which is kind of a an applied brick veneer um, oh, okay a lot of times I have you know throughout my career I have like not wanted that kind of thing brought on to the projects that I've done, but I have had it done so convincingly by uh, contractors in the last 10 years, because it is a cost sa saver for clients that I am arguing less against it now. 
and it does save a tremendous amount of money. And I can guarantee you, I can't guarantee you, I can, I can be very, very persuasive in saying that you would never be able to tell the difference between the historic brick that's on that existing foundation and the the veneer brick, um, thin brick that we would be putting in its place. That uh, when you go by, I think you'll be you'll be very, very pleased and excited about how how well it turns out. Tell me something. Do you have any change of grade around this house? Very little. Yeah. Very, very little. So your foundation would be uh, exposed uh, for uh, a foot or less. Uh, yes, uh, this existing house is up out of the ground, um, a touch over a foot. Yes, uh, yeah. because it's it's an old structure. Um, yeah, you can see it very plainly in these uh, pictures right here. Yeah, yeah. And that's what would be, that would be the final product right there. And it would be more consistent because um, uh, you'd, so, see, you'd see more brick at the, at, the, at, the, uh, at the base of the house. As you can see that, that extension to the, uh, to the left uh, is a concrete block foundation as opposed to a brick foundation. That's why I call it an addition because at some point in time, I want to say 60s or 70s or 80s that was put on. Uh -huh. And it's already cracking and listing and whatever. And you would probably have your uh, your plate at the same height and drop your uh, first floor joist for the addition inside the foundation rather than across the top. It could be very well, yes. That way you get your step down. Yes, yes. Without changing the grade line. Yes. Yeah. I've used that um, that uh, thin brick, as you call it, and um, it's real brick, and the special pieces on the corners. Right. Right. Give you that three and a half inch end. Right. It it's it's surprisingly convincing. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you haven't noticed, you probably haven't, but the Puritan building on Main Street in Hyannis is thin brick. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Lousy job, but it's thin brick. The material is very uh, convincing. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. No, you'd be surprised how many chimneys in Wiano are hmm. uh, thin brick. Saves a lot of weight. It saves a tremendous amount of weight. Yeah, yeah, good product. And, and if it's well done, it's, uh, uh, virtually uh, and it's detectable. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Everyone else, no other further questions? All right. Would someone like to do motions? I'll have yeah, see. Right. Who, uh, you want? I'll yeah. do it if you want. I'll ask you to do it. That's fine. Okay. Uh, this is pertaining to Jeffrey and Lisa Edelson's Home at 523 Main Street, Catuit. Matt. Carol, can you do the motions? I don't think Nancy oh. can hear me. I, 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 I'm fine. It's Nancy to do them. She's already started. <laughs> yeah, you didn't hear me? I, I can hear you fine. Yeah. I as well. Fran, are you hearing me? No? It looks oh, like Fran, uh, frozen. Fran's frozen. Yeah, well, I'll continue on with the motion, I guess. So, uh, Jeffrey and Lisa uh, Edels Edelson. Uh, and their property at 523 Main Street, Katuit, map 021, parcel 095, built 1890. Uh, they are requesting a partial demolition to remove the family room addition, the rear deck on the east side of the house, the kitchen gable end, partially remove west-facing roof, remove house brick and block foundation, and demo existing detached garage, which was built in 1992. Construct a new family home to the east, extend the kitchen and bedroom above to the south, construct new second floor dormer to the west, 
a new foundation and a new garage with a loft, which is in the back of the property. Uh, motion number one, I move that after review and consideration of public testimony, the application and associated materials, the significant building at 523 Main Street, Katuit, is a preferably preserved significant building. I'll second that. And a, uh, an I vote will impose an 18-month delay, a nay will not impose an 18-month delay. Fran, you're, you're muted, I think. Yes. Yes. Can you unmute yourself, Fran? Should I just do the roll call? Do the roll call, Nancy. Yeah. Okay. We have a quorum, more than a quorum. Okay. Uh, Marilyn Fifield? Nay. Uh, George Jessup? Nay. Carol Powell? Nay. Jack Kay? Nay. And Fran Parks? You're still muted, Fran. Um, but I also, Nancy Shoemaker, vote nay. And... Uh, Motion carries. Yeah, she's still, still muted. So... Um, that means that there is not a an 18 month delay. So therefore I move that in accordance with section 112-3F, the Barnstable Historical Commission determines that the partial demolition of the building located at 523 Main Street Katuit is not detrimental to the historical, cultural, and architectural heritage or resources of the town. I'll second that. And actually, do you have the I didn't bring the other second page in with me. Can you? Uh, well, it just has the I vote determines that the partial demolition okay. of the family yeah. structure. Oh, well, I'll let you do that after. No demolition okay. delay is imposed. Uh, so the roll, you, it's just the roll call vote again. Because you, you have the motion, you have the second, and, and the deputy. Oh, it's on the other page is what an I yeah. vote do. Yeah. yeah, we'll do that in a minute. Um, so we will start a vote with um, Marilyn Fifield. Oh, tell me again. <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't I don't blame you for being confused. <laughs> I lost track. Um, I move that in accordance with section 112-3F, the Barcelona Historical Commission determines that the partial demolition of the building located at 523 Main Street is not detrimental to the historical, cultural, and architectural heritage or resources of the town. That was stated and the explanation that you, on, it was on page two is that an I vote determines that the partial demolition of a single family structure is not detrimental and therefore there's no demolition delay imposed. All right. Thank so you. We'll, uh, sorry, <laughs> Marilyn. Okay. Thanks. Uh, next, uh, George Jessup. Aye. Cheryl Powell. Aye. Nancy Clark is still not here, I believe. Um, Jack Kay. Aye. And Fran Parks, Fran, you're still, that's some, I wonder if um, the town is doing, oh, there you go. No, no. No, but she knows and she could always call in as well. There you go. She's on. Yeah. Okay, Fran. You're aye. Right. Okay. And Nancy Shoemaker, aye. Did you do, George? Yes, I did. Aye. Okay. That's all. Uh, Fran, do you want to take over and explain everything to our, uh, the aye. Uh, yeah. Well, um, so that means that you are free to uh, do as you have uh, put in a, uh, a motion to do. So you are free to demolish the walls and so on accordingly and good luck with it. And I hope you do put a brick facade or real, you know, I guess it's not facade, the real bricks, no matter what. Sounds like a great, great addition. Thank you very much. I appreciate all your time. Okay. Thank you, Nancy. Yep, go ahead. Um, Marilyn, any community preservation update? Oh, no, our meeting uh, this month was canceled because we didn't have any applications. No. Oh. And um, any upcoming historical events? I have one this, um, actually two, Friday night at the 1717 Meeting House in West Barnstable, 7 p.m., this Friday night, 7 p.m., uh, there's going to be a lecture about Lieutenant 
Lemuel Snow. I think I mentioned him probably at the last meeting and someone that I knew nothing about, uh, but he was uh, quite a, 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 a major role for a local man in our revolution. Uh, worked with uh, George Washington, uh, saw a lot of a lot of duty. He came back and lived in West Barnstable until he was 54 and then moved out west. And this gentleman, Kirk Moldoff, who's a direct uh, descendant, seems to be a very, very thorough historian. He's going to be talking about not just his relative, Lieutenant Snow, but also talking about Barnstable's um, role in the American Revolution. So that should be a real, I hope all of you can come, should be a really good uh, good lecture, interesting. And then Saturday, Hyannis Historical Society is going to have their annual meeting at the Hyannis Library. And John Basile of the, um, has, has been in our media um, and is very respected. He wrote a book quite a few years ago about Cape Cod jazz scene. And I believe that's what he's going to be talking about. That's Saturday. Um, let's see what time at 11 a.m. at the JF. I'm sorry. I said it's not at the Hyannis Library. It was the library. I think it's at the JFK Muse, uh, Museum. Well, look, look it up and I can send it out to everybody. But it's Saturday. Hyannis Historical Society and um, John Basile will be talking and I'll let you know the location. That's it. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, next is the 2023 Preservation Award it's guidelines and discussions. Um, so uh, we need to uh, start putting the information out about the, uh, the preservation <laughs> awards to the local historical societies and um, get it posted on uh, the town website um, and if possible to send it as a um, community notice to the newspapers, the Patriot, see if they'll just do a public notice for no charge. Mm -hmm. They used to do those, but I wouldn't be too. Uh, I'll do a poster as I have in the past uh, that will, can also be a PDF to send off in emails and be on websites. Um, but could somebody send me the exact information? Any, you know, if there's changes from what we said last year, um, maybe yeah. Cheryl, if you look at what was written last year and if there's anything we should change, let me know. Uh, there's actually a couple corrections to that, which was sent. Yeah. Uh, it seems like only a couple minor things were taken out. Uh, and that is the... I'm the uh, Marilyn and I. And thank you so much, Marilyn, for working with me on that to to put those together and to make the changes according to what we voted on. Um, the available on this on page one under the bottom of number one uh, with regard to the interior uh, secretary of the interior standards for the rehabilitation of historic property. Um, probably should be properties. Uh, available on the town web website for the BHC confirming the requirements for historic properties. Uh, that was supposed to remain in there. Um, and then the last, only other one, really minor. Um, uh, so I don't know how that got changed. One, two, third paragraph up. Um, as was the original intention at the inception of these wards, any number of applications can be considered annually and and anyone uh, might submit a nomination. It seems to have just, but that's what we voted on. Uh, I can get that, that to you, Nancy. Yeah, just, well, for me mainly, if there's information uh, verbiage that should be changed within the poster. Oh, right, okay. Well, okay. I didn't know if you're gonna be mailing these out. So I was yeah. Okay. okay. All right. May I say, we have uh, Memorial Day parades back on the agenda after the COVID-19 uh, postponements. Look up your local local parade. <clears throat> I expect there's one in Katuit. Actually, there's not one in Katuit. Um, they usually, people usually go to the Centerville parade. Mm -hmm. It was Sorry. usually the other way around. The last time I was in it. So there is a Centerville parade. Maybe that was a 4th of July parade. 
I think it probably was. Yeah, there's usually a Centerville parade every year. Um, yeah. I think it is. A, <laughs> it's the 4th of July I'm thinking of for Katuit. You're right. right. Uh, but uh, and there is the uh, Memorial Day parade. And um, one of our local merchants there uh, sponsors the uh, veterans' participation. That's um, our. Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the store, but I, it doesn't come to me right now. Your general store in? No, the carpet carpet dealer in carpet in, store in Australia. In in yeah. Uh, Flag Day is the 14th, and I'm just realizing that's before our next meeting. That's, you know, you mentioned veterans, and it's certainly a, a nod to our history. Uh, at the Meeting House Farm on 149 in West Barnstable, uh, at 6 p.m., they're going to have their usual Flag Day commemoration with um, someone playing caps, and uh, members of our, our state representatives and other people are there. So that's 6 p.m., at the Meeting House Farm, not the Meeting House, on Route 149. And then also on the 17th of June, uh, Barnstable Historical Society will open for the season. And just this week, the Coast Guard Heritage Museum opened up. Summer is here, almost. Summer is here, yeah. Is indeed. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Very good, all right. All right. So, um, Marilyn? Um, we have several uh, minutes listed for uh, approval. Have you had a chance to review all of those? Yes. Okay. I, think my, I think I added my name to all of them at the end. Okay, great. So I will accept. Uh, I'm going to mute myself here. Okay. Um, we'll accept a motion to accept the minutes from April 19th, 2022, May 31st, 2022, June 21st, 2022, July 19th, 2022, August 16th, 2022, September 20th, 2022, March 21st, 2023, and April 18th, 2023. Uh, Madam Chair, I would request that uh, I, I did have changes. I did not bring them with me here to the office for the August and September. I'm fine with the others, but paperwork where I wrote down those changes, corrections, um, is at home, unfortunately. All right. So you could make a motion to accept all but that one. That month. Two. August, September. That's okay. Okay. So is there a motion to accept all of the minutes with the exception of August 16th, 2022 and September 20th, 2022? So moved. Nancy Shoemaker. Second, Marilyn. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll say aye. All those aye. in favor? We we have a uh, you haven't, Fran, voted. Okay, great. Um, so. That's that's everything on our agenda for today. Do I have a motion uh, for adjournment? Accept a motion <laughs> to um, adjourn the meeting. So moved. I'll second it. Second. Second. Oh. There was a second. It was Jack. Fran um, is frozen again. Um, so I think we are now officially. Do you want to do a roll call, Nancy, to, to adjourn? Um, yeah, I thought she, I, oh, there's yeah. she back again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we want to do it. We're going to do a roll call of, of the uh, adjourning. So Nancy Shoemaker, aye. Cheryl Powell, aye. Marilyn Fifield, aye. Jack K, aye. And Fran? Fran Parks, aye. Not necessary. All right. George? George is on the phone, I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have a good evening, everybody. Right. See you. See you okay. next Monday. Okay. See you this Friday. Try to come. <laughs>